Hello YouTube, this is Salam. Today I'm going to talk to you about my homemade deer feeder. I built several of them throughout the years. I built this one in 2012. It's 2020 now. It's been very reliable. I'm fixing uh, the ground over here because the hogs rooted and it was terrible. I put uh, one bucket of dirt and I'm ramming it. I will put another one, raise it up a little bit. I will bring the feeder over here and I will tell you everything about this feeder. I raised the ground about seven to eight inches. I compacted it. I put the feeder back where it was. And now we're gonna talk about this feeder. I have a lot of still images. When I build this feeder, I will integrate them with this video. I will bring you a closer and I will show you all the part of this feeder. The feet for this feeder are made of two and a half inch electrical conduit. They actually measure two and seven eight, the outside diameter. I welded a quarter inch blade to the base of the pipe so it doesn't sink to the ground. 
it's quarter inch thick, four inch by five inch. I had to extend these pipes. I bought actually four. I cut one of them to three feet, three inches because the, they measure 10 feet. And uh, I cut pipe in half and I use it also to supply the pipe as you see to add strength to it I welded it all the way ground it and then put this uh, half pipe to the side squeeze it with the clamp and welded it On the top, I welded the three inch pipes at specific angle, so the leg will come out straight. And I have quarter 20 to tie the pipe, the foot to the pipe up there. I welded this quarter inch rod and I used the chain to spring to hold the feeder in place. This one over here, I made it stronger so I could lock this cable in case I need to do maintenance to this or if this fail the barrel won't drop in case of high wind or whatever I took the cable up and I looped it down to create this and then it go up to a pulley up there and then come down to the barrel I built this cage to keep the critter out of the motor. I see them a lot of time they get on a feeder that not protected and they will damage the motor or the prop or chew wires.
I made this. So you could access the timer over here. And I built special deal to support the armature of the motor so the weight of the corn don't damage the motor. A lot of them, they only put the motor without any support from underneath. And with time, the armature or the motor get damaged and you have to replace it. This one been running since 2012 and it's still good. I welded a solar panel base and I'm using solar panel and I'm running the wire through this pipe to inside. I made the funnel myself using sheet metal. And this is the access to the timer and battery. When I built this feeder, I had two things in mind. One, I want to make sure everything is lightweight. There is no part of this feeder weight more than 40 pounds. And that's the barrel itself. I brought it here in pieces and I assembled it over here. I connected the three legs to the top piece. I ran the cable through the pulley and then I erected the three legs and they came up easy. And then I connected the feeder and everything it's easy to assemble, everything just connect to the feeder. The second thing I had in mind, safety. A lot of feeder you buy from the store, you have to use a ladder or they have a ladder built into them. In the wood, muddy and uh, rain and all that, it make dangerous situation. If you climb on the feeder, you could fall and hurt yourself. This one over here, as I'm gonna demonstrate here in a little bit, it's very easy. You could lower the feeder, fill it up, raise it back up, you lock the cable so it doesn't drop, you could access the timer over here, you don't have to climb anything. So those two things was in my mind, to make sure everything is light and strong, and also it's safe, so I could operate it safely. I will lower the barrel, and I will show you what's inside the barrel, and then I show you how easy to fill it up with core, and how easy to raise the barrel back to where it, where it is right now. I removed the lock. Once I get it to this point, I will remove the springs. The reason I'm using spring, so if there is wind, and it moves the barrel, it's uh, kind of buffer the wind. It doesn't drop the barrel or cause stress on the legs. And it keeps the barrel in the center of the legs.
I'm using a barrel with lead. The support for the barrel, I use this uh, square tubing to offset this away from the barrel so I could use the lid real easy. It won't be very close over here. I took an old cable like this one here. They call them a Crosby around here and I welded to 5.8 all thread. Like I said, I welded it and I used bolt to connect everything as an extra measure because the thickness of the barrel is about a sixteenth of inch or maybe even less. I want to make sure this barrel won't drop. When I built the funnel and I welded it inside the barrel, I took some bondo and I seal all the way around and then I painted it and now I'm going to fill it with corn Currently there are six and a half bags of corn inside this barrel. Those bags of corn 50 pound each so there is more than 300 pound inside this barrel and I'll show you how to lift it up or how easy it is to lift it up. Let us test it. As you see, it's very easy.
I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for your support and thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.